Hello, hello everybody, it's your boy Prof. Chalk, and we're back again with a new video, Elden Ring's lore explained by Vati Vidya. So we played Elden Ring, we beat Elden Ring, now we need to understand Elden Ring, okay, let's go. Because, I mean, I Our played story 50 hours in the lands to understand between. stuff. It begins in the cosmos, in far the away, with an outer god called the Greater Will. Okay. There are a lot Me of outer you. gods mentioned in Elden Ring. You can think At of these six. kind of like the great ones of Bloodborne. They're uh, distant that, beings. That, they're all that looks terrifying. I kind of want to kill it in a video all powerful game. and they're quite unknowable PC, by design. But many of these hey, outer Sauron. gods want to make their presence felt in the world. The greater will may be most of all. To this end, it sent a golden star hurtling towards the lands between. The Elden Star's incantation tells us that this golden star was bearing a beast, an Elden oh, beast. The Elden beast. The Elden Remembrance calls it a vassal beast of the greater will. If you didn't know, a vassal is someone who holds land on behalf of their overlord. Obviously, this is fitting in this case, because the Elden Beast occupied the lands between on behalf of the Greater Will and was a living incarnation of the concept of order. As Wait. such, this beast would later become the Elden Ring. The Elden Ring itself is made up of runes of power, some great, some small, that together represent a sort of logic for the world to follow. Uh -huh. Thus, the Elden Ring represents order. The true nature of this order is a subject of constant debate and research no undergone by fundamentalists. But two of the key fundamentals are the laws of causality and regression. You can think of the law of causality as cause and effect, where actions have consequences and those consequences huh. are new causes that branch out into infinity. I, I see what you did there, they branch out. These are Let's the relationships go. between things. Then there's the law of regression that states that all things eternally yearn to converge and return to their what? roots. Fittingly, then, the Elden Ring is housed within the Erd Tree, which towers over the lands between. But it's very important to stress that life in the lands between did not begin with the Erd Tree, the Elden Ring, or the Elden Beast. No, the lands between were occupied well before the Greater Will came. Bye. There were other beings here. There were other factions here. Oh God, the there were other dudes. gods here. Wait, wait. There were other beings here. I never seen there this. Those are arms. I've n I never noticed this. I've killed so many of these factions here. There were other gods here, and there was even another great tree here before the Erd what? Tree. What? And this is where there is? a huge twist regarding the Erd Tree comes in. So. There are incantations in the game called Aspects of the Crucible. According to their descriptions, uh -huh. these are manifestations of the Erd Tree's primal vital energy. Oh, those are from those knights. Uh, I don't remember the name. And I quote, they are an aspect of the primordial crucible where all life was once blended together. But how could all life be blended together in the Erd Tree if the Erd Tree appeared after life existed? Well, there can only be one answer, right? That the Erd tree, tree is a parasite, that. and it took oh. over a tree that existed here before. This ancient tree was called the Great Tree. So the Great Tree was almost certainly the location of this primordial crucible, and it oh, must have been a very tree. powerful primordial force for the Greater Will to have commandeered. It might even be the reason the Lands Between is important to the Greater Will in the first place, it also explains why spells and enemies related to the Great Tree's Crucible would eventually be looked down upon. For example, the Knot Talisman is fashioned from a knotted vestige of the Crucible, and it was considered a signifier of the Divine in ancient times, but is now increasingly impurity. disdained as an impurity as civilization has advanced. Enemies related to the Crucible are the Omen, the Misbegotten and the Crucible Knights, and all three of them would be shunned, enslaved, or imprisoned. Wait, Those who speak for the Knights were enslaved, the tree but they don't like want you to know its roots, big so to bosses. speak. According to the spell big, big Protection edge. of the Erd Tree, in the beginning everything was in opposition to the Erd Tree, but through countless victories in war, it became the embodiment of order. In Marika's own words, the Erd Tree governs all. The choice is thine. Become one with the Order, or divest thyself of it. 
To wallow at the fringes, a powerless upstart. But the greater will needed more than a big... Wait, wait, the story is... Okay, so what? Greater God came so hurt. Well, not really hurt, but then I was like, yo, I'ma send my energy, conquer this shit. This is my planet now. That's fucked up. Tree. It needed loyal agents in the lands between. To this end, it has the two fingers, uh, who are its envoys. The two fingers disgusting. heirloom has a weird picture of them, but it reads, Of course, fingers cannot speak, yet these are eloquent. Persistently, they wriggle, spelling wriggle. out mysteries in the air. Thus did we gain the words, the words of our faith. These words... Imagine making a faith of over fingers. Hairy fingers. That's fucked. ...are interpreted by the finger readers. These are the undying old crones that you would have found throughout yeah, the lands they between. They die, though. They pass down the wisdom of the two fingers. Or at least, they used to. Your fingers. Wait, please, your fingers. I can read them. Most of them appear to have lost their purpose, and oh. they're desperate to read your fingers and tell you annoying riddles, since their two fingers are likely dead. And yes, of course, there are multiple sets of two fingers. You would have found their corpses on the tops oh, yeah, of the, the Divine Towers. Yeah. Atop the Why are they at the top of the Divine Towers? These towers, you loot the fingers in order to activate the true power of a great rune. Yeah. Specifically, though, you are giving benediction back to your great rune. You're taking a blessing back from the two dead fingers, essentially. But they're dead. This is just one of many blessings that the two fingers can bestow, and my point is kind of that the Where's two the fingers clearly have more than just influence. They have oh, real are... power. Wait, that was a picture of the three fingers, right? Because there's two fingers and there's three fingers. On some level. The Greater Will needs these powerful envoys and agents because, while it's obviously incredibly powerful, it does seem limited by a few things. First is space. Like the Greater Will didn't come to the lands between itself, it sent an elden beast to do its bidding instead. Second is time. There is a moment later in the game where your pair of two fingers go still because they're forced to commune with the Greater Will for guidance. When they are finished. Oh, yeah. The fingers will again offer their guidance. The but thousands, yeah. if not tens of thousands, of moons must first pass. No matter for me, but you. How will you ever manage to wait? So the great I hated that bitch, honestly. That old bitch, I was happy when she died. The will needs a physical manifestation of order. It needs envoys to convey its will, but what it also needs is a god. Introducing Marika the Eternal. I have this utterly oh enormous god, mind this? map of Elden Ring's lore, and there's oh a reason she's at the center. My she's essentially god. the equivalent of Gwyn from Dark Souls. What? Except she's what? Center. She's essentially the equivalent of Gwyn oh, from Dark Souls. But she was like a daughter except or some shit. Unlike Gwyn, Marika didn't just crawl out of the dark and find power. To an extent, it seems like she earned it. We don't know much she about did. her origins, except that she is of Here the is. Numen race, which is actually an origin that you can choose in the character selection screen. Ah. Numen come from outside the lands between and are supposed descendants of denizens of another world. Long lived but seldom born. At some point, Marika was chosen as an Empyrean. What, what is an Empyrean? Well, an Empyrean is a being chosen by the Fingers as a candidate for godhood. As an Empyrean, Marika received the aid of a shadow to do her bidding. So what is a shadow? Well, it's a wolf, shadow-bound to its Empyrean by the two fingers. Luna ah. Princess Rani is another example of an Empyrean with a shadow-bound beast. You would have met Bly. Oh, the furry dude. These creatures are the Empyrean's very own shadow. They are completely loyal to their needs and, by definition, incapable of treachery. Marika's Wait. shadow... Well, why did she make us kill them then? Because at some point she makes us kill the furry dude, was a beast right? called Malaketh. Every Empyrean Wait, uses their shadow a, in different ways, but furry, Marika's sole need of her shadow was as a vessel to lock away destined death. So what is destined death? Well, according to Enya, it's the rune of death. The rune of death goes by two names. The other is destined death. We mentioned earlier that the Elden Ring is made up of runes, and mm -hmm. at some point, 
maybe when she was chosen as a god, Marika plucked the Rune of Death from the Elden Ring. Yoink. She gave the Rune of Death to Malekith, her totally loyal shadow, who bore a black blade imbued with this rune. Rat. It's kind of genius, really. In a single act, she removed the concept of death from the lands between, while also commanding total control of death through her shadow, who could deliver it at her whim. That sounds absolutely terrifying. Jesus, how did she die? Now, some of you might be asking, if death is removed from the lands between, how come I can kill this dog? First off, shame on you. Second, True. from a law point of view, dog. that dog isn't really dead. It's simply in the process of its spirit, or its soul, returning to the Erd Tree. Uh, catacomb dungeons, ah. for example, are specifically constructed near the roots of the Great Tree for this reason, so that the Erd Tree can reabsorb their ashes back into it. This process replaced the concept of a death that you were destined to have. But this random spirit outside of a catacomb dungeon says it best. A proper death means returning to three of patients until time comes and the root calls to As you. another example of this theory, uh, hey, when you kill God, a major boss, God you receive a God remembrance three? of them. These are spirits, God and they are hewn into the Erd Tree. In this way, thanks to the Erd Tree's grace, their spirits are immortalized, in a sense. This new form of death also explains what's happening when you summon spirits. From ash and return to the Erd Tree. However, some spirits never return to the Erd Tree, and they rise within death as Why? corpses or skeletons. This is also partly because of Death Root, which we were addressing in another death. video. Ah, when think about our hollow resting place is violated. To refuse the Erd Tree's call to return, to live within death. So this is the new order. And it's important to stress that it was in this moment, when the Rune of Death was removed, when destined death was taken, this is when order became the Golden Order. Mm. The Forbidden Shadow plucked from the Golden Order upon its creation. Specifically, this was Marika's Golden Order. So not only did she become a god and a vessel for the Elden Ring, she became renowned as Marika the Eternal for her removal of destined death. It was a huge part of her character and her reign as well. However, Marika had more than just death to conquer. She had wars to fight as the world was occupied by many forces. Okay, listen, how do you fight a war versus somebody that controls death and cannot die, but can kill you? Uh, how does that work? Forces that could threaten her hey, golden order. It's a order. Placiduxus. There was war with the Stormlord, who likely Storm ruled over Stormvale. Lord. And there was a war with the Giants, who were masters of a flame that could burn the Erd Tree. Right. There was war with, with the Ancient leg. Dragons, who incidentally had stones that could twist time and thus slay a god. And finally, there was war ah. brewing with the Carrion Royalty, who had previously obeyed laws which contravened the Golden Order. Thus, sort of similar to how the Greater Will needed an Empyrean to enforce its will, Marika herself needed someone to wage war. So, there was to be a husband, a consort, an elden That's lord. That's Godfrey, right? Godfrey? The man chosen was Hora Lu, a ferocious warrior who became known as the Lord of the Battlefield. His lord crown was battlefield. warranted with strength, and while it was for this strength that Marika married him, he was also required to take a vow to conduct himself as a lord. To suppress the ceaseless lust for battle that ah. raged within, Horalu took the beast regent Sarosh upon his back. Sarosh? You'll notice this is another example of a beast being given for the purpose of serving order. Thus, in this moment, he went from being Horalu, warrior, to Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, consort to Queen Marika, and a certified demigod. That's why he kills him and then, you know, goes into his WWE maneuvers. Godfrey ah. and Marika had three demigod children together. Okay. There was Godwin the Golden, who Godwin. you saw being killed in the opening trailer, and there were all- Wait, that's- I thought that was Godfrey being killed. But that's- that's not Godfrey. There was Godwin the Golden, Godwin. who you saw being killed in the opening trailer, and there were also the reviled Omen twins, Morgoth, who guards the Erd Tree, and Moog, who became Lord of Blood. You might think that Godric was another demigod child, but he actually wasn't. Instead, he was probably descended from Godwin. Wait. Anyway, we'll talk about the demi- This motherfucker's nobody? Demigods more in detail in another video, so subscribe for that. But okay. for now, just Already know that Godfrey brother. and his offspring were the first demigods. 
henceforth known as the Golden Lineage. Golden Lineage. In his wars, Godfrey led his 16 Crucible Knights into battle, who were named so for they fought with the primordial powers of the Erd Tree. They were Their incantations were aspects of the Crucible itself, and they likely fought giants, dragons, the Storm Lord, and I more to this. usher in their age, the age of the Erd Tree. In Marika's own words, Hark, brave warriors. Hark, my Lord Godfrey. We commend your deeds. Guidance hath delivered ye through each ordeal to the place ye stand. Put the giants to the sword and confine the flame atop the mount. Let a new epoch begin, an epoch glistening with life. Brandish the Elden Ring for the age of the Erd Tree. The Erd Tree would go on to be largely seen as a blessing for all of those in the lands between especially those close to it in Lanedale, the capital city of the Erd Tree. The tree bestowed blessings. For example, the dew that dropped from its branches were like jewels. It loomed overhead as a constant reminder of order, and its roots reached far and wide. It probably does quite well for, you know, lowering the electricity bill. Right. Relieving many of the burden of death. In fact, Erd Tree burial was one of the highest honors a hero burial. could receive. One by one, the previous factions of the world fell. The giants were put to the sword, and their fell god was killed by Marika herself. The ancient dragons oh, broke down. That's the hammer of that dude that you fight before the Elden Beast. Because he has that attack, right? Where he jumps up, slams the ground, and golden lights explode. On the walls of Lanedale, but met fierce retaliation. However, I think the House of the Erd Tree encountered the most trouble against the, the land to their southwest, Leonia. Here, the House of the Moon repelled their offensives time and time again. And I mean that literally, because there was not just one, but two wars fought here. And in uh. both of these, there was no victory for the Golden, nor for the Moon. And I suspect it was probably because of these lobsters. These damn things can snipe you from like a mile away, and it's bullshit. Actually, it was probably because of the Carrion Knights, who, according to their weapons, were able to wield sorcerous battle skills, and despite numbering fewer than 20, this power 20. made them a match for even the champions of gold in battle. These enchanted knights were anointed by the Lunar Queen, a young astrologer who went on to establish the House of Caria as royalty in this land. She With her moons. bewitching lunar magic, she won over the Academy of Raya Lucaria, where glintstone sorcery was studied, and Brother Dodge, united please. the Carian royal family and the learned scholars of Raya Lucaria defended their home from Bro, the golden aggressors. Please dodge. At the head of this great I golden army was Radagon. Lord Radagon was a great champion possessed of flowing red locks. He came to these lands at the head of a great golden host when he met Lady Renala in battle. These two champions clashed, fell in love, and joined their houses. Radigan once cleansed himself Peace. with celestial dew, repented his territorial aggressions, and swore his love to Renala. Oh. The order of the Erdry and the fate of the moon were conjoined and all the wounds of war forgiven. You might think it's strange that the greater will would permit this union, but it's not too odd, all things considered. As with most From Software games, sorcery and faith are just two sides of the same coin, and both of these powers Those stem these from the cosmos. Awesome. Radagon and Renala were known to have three children together. Okay. Luna Princess Rani, Rani. who inherited her mother's propensity for lunar magic, Radan, who pets. took after his father Radagon and would go on to master gravitational magic. Okay, and I got a question though. How did that? Okay, uh, Rani's mother, she is normal height, normal weight. You saw that motherfucker, he big. How did she birth him? He must have decimated her vagina. And okay, Rikard, that's all I'm gonna who say. Who pioneered new hex sorceries and would go on to feed himself to a great serpent. Wait, Rikard is a brother of Rani? I told y'all she was evil, nobody trusted It me. follows that. At some point after this, Marika began to harbor doubts. Doubts about the Golden doubts. Order that she had had a hand in creating. In Marika's own words, I declare mine intent to search the depths of the Golden Order through understanding of the proper way 
our faith, our grace is increased. Those blissful early days of blind belief are long past. My comrades, the Renaissance. why must ye falter? And it's at this point that we should talk about Marika's motivations, okay. her character. This is surely going to be have a one of those huge points of debate in the coming years. But for now, my working theory is that she wanted to discover the truth behind order and the truth behind the greater will. And she believed that bonds had to be broken so that they could be better understood. She believed that there was great meaning to be found in hardship. Queen Marika has high hopes for us that we continue to struggle unto eternity. For Lord Godfrey, his struggle ended at the end of his campaigns. According to his armor, he led the war against the giants, faced the Storm Lord alone. And then there came a moment when his last worthy enemy fell. And it was then, as the story is told, that the hue of Lord Godfrey's eyes faded. In he truth, he ass. was robbed of his grace. Then Marika sent him away. What? My lord, and thy warriors, I divest each of thee of thy grace. With thine eyes dimmed, ye will be driven from the lands between. Ye will wage war in a land afar, where ye will live and die. This became known as the Long March of the Tarnished, as God- Wait, she was like, hey, I need warriors, come fight for me. They fought for her, they won, and then she's like, eh, eh, a joke on you, I don't need you no more. Fuck off. Bye-bye. What the Free hell? and his tarnished descendants bitch. walked away from the lands between. But Queen Marika absolutely had a plan here, that Lord Godfrey and his descendants would one day return stronger, having struggled outside of grace. Then, after thy death, I will give back what I once claimed. Return to the lands between. Wage war. And brandish the Elden Ring. Grow strong in the face of death. Warriors of my lord, Lord Godfrey. Soon after, she found a new husband. Either that or a new husband was found for her. When Godfrey first Elden She kicked him out and then she fucked somebody else? What the hell? Lord was hounded from the lands between. Radigan oh. left Renala to return to the Earth Tree capital, becoming Queen Marika's second husband and King Consort, taking the title of Second Elden Lord. The mystery endures to Fuck this boy. Day as to why Lord Radigan would cast Lady Renala aside, and moreover, why a mere champion would be chosen for the seat of a Elden mere champion? Lord. Whatever the case, <laughs> as a hey, he beat my ass for a long time, so I can't really talk too much shit, okay? Part of this union, Radagon's prior three children with Renala became demigod's stepchildren, granted grace thanks to their new family tree. Steps Renala yes. was broken by this, and so was her country, Leonia. The Queen's set reads, when Renala, head of both the Academy of Raya Lucaria and the Carrion royal family, lost her husband Radagon, her heart went along with him. And then those at the Academy realized that Renala was no champion after all. In the wake wow. of Radagon's betrayal and Renala's poor judgment, Leonia struggled poor with judgment. civil war with the Academy of Raya Lucaria on one side and the Carrion Royals on the other. Uh -huh. And it's here, during the Age of the Erd Tree, that Luna Princess Rani, daughter of Renala and Radagon, stole a fragment of the Rune of Death. It happened during the Golden Age of the Erd Tree, long before the shattering of the Elden Ring. Someone stole a fragment of the Rune of Death from Malaketh, the Black Blade. As mentioned previously, Malaketh was Marika's shadow, and he had sealed Destined Death in a black blade. Then a fragment, only a fragment, of this rune of death was stolen. And once this happened, Malaketh went a step further in protecting Destined Death. He bound the blade within his own flesh, such that none might rob death ever again. It was too late, however. He became a this fragment of the rune of death was used immediately, that night, to kill a demigod, Marika's own son, Godwin the Golden. 
That was the first recorded death of a demigod in all history, and it became the catalyst. Soon, the Elden Ring was smashed, and thus sprang forth the war known as the Shattering. Now... So Rani started everything. Huh. There is a lot of really credible evidence that Marika was behind this plot to have a fragment of the Rune of Death stolen. There's also a ton of evidence that Marika is behind the entirety of your tarnished quest, but we'll talk about that in another video. For now, all you really need to know, in terms of the timeline at least, is this. After the marriage of Marika and Radagon, and after a fragment of the Rune of Death was stolen, Marika went on to shatter the Elden Ring, mm -hmm. and Radagon attempted to repair it, to no avail. The Elden Ring had been broken into runes, some great, and some small. You know, it's said that Lord Radigan harbored a secret. A famed sculptor of the Erd Tree capital sculptor. was once summoned to render Lord Radigan's likeness in giant stature when he glimpsed the skeleton in Radigan's closet. And as such, it's said the great statue harbors his secret too. Of course, the huge Wait, twist. What just happened there? In Elden Ring is that Radigan is Marika. What? Or, depending on what you believe, he became her, for she knew it was going to happen. In Marika's own words, O oh Radigan, leal hound of the Golden Order, thou art yet to become me. Thou art yet to become a god. Let us be shattered, both mine other self. You can tell when From Software is keeping something a little bit open. Okay, I'm extremely confused. Ha! Okay, he's gonna explain probably. Ended, and of everything in Elden Ring's lore, this will also go on to be one of the biggest unknowns as we move forward. For example, the wording, Thou art yet to become me, reinforces that Marika and Radagon were two separate entities before the Shattering. However, in like contrast, there is also something? evidence that Radagon was always part of Marika. For example, Enya says that The demigods are each and all the direct offspring of Queen Marika. But how can- So- he, She f fucked herself. Right? Can this be if Radagon married Renala and had Speck. those demigod children? The only way that makes sense is if Radagon was always Marika and he just went over there to seduce Renala long ago. I'll present more concrete theories in the future, but on this matter, the most important thing is, what do you think? Uh, While you can figure out a ton of Elden Ring's story, not all of it is open to interpretation. Certain things are, and this is one of them. And your interpretation is a big part of what makes this story special. At any rate, the union of Radagon and Marika seems to be a union of two fundamental opposing laws of the Golden Order. We mentioned these laws earlier, actually. There's the law of causality, and Marika is an agent of cause and effect. And there's the law of regression, as Radagon is a character who aspires to be complete and regress together. So I have a theory that forcing these two beings that represent these concepts together would have corrected Marika's deviance. Uh, but even so, she was imprisoned in the Erd Tree for the crime of the Shattering. Marika's trespass demanded a heavy sentence. But even in shackles, she remains a god and the vision's vessel. The conjoined Radagon and Marika oh even had two demigod children. Hey, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting PTSD. Please don't show her. Come on, don't, don't. Of their own, Mikola and Millennia. These two children were God born afflicted. Mikola was cursed with eternal it childhood, no and Millennia harbored a horrific rot God within. Rot. Even so, these two children were both chosen as Imperians. They were immensely sacred beings and eligible to inherit godhood from the greater will. Perhaps the greater will was just desperate to find a worthy successor, and indeed Oof. in the Shattering War to come, many would try to claim the shards of the Elden Ring, and they would try to take the throne, including, of course, the Tarnished, who returned from their long march at long last, which we'll talk about in the next main lore video. 
I should probably also mention here that if you become a patron, you'll see upcoming lore videos early, as ah, that's one of the rewards cool, you cool. get if you pledge to the $3 tier. And if you think my channel really adds a lot of value to the Souls games for you, to the point where you pledge $20, so... Okay. Uh, hey, honestly, I, I think I'm more confused than at the start of the video. So she fucked herself and had children with herself, uh, but she's... I, 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 listen, we're gonna have to watch more of this probably to understand this goddamn Miyazaki and his genius lore. What is it? Ingenious? I don't know anymore. Uh, I is smarter, but maybe too smart and it ends up being stupid. I don't know. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoy this. Quick thank you to the YouTube members and patrons. Thank y'all for the support and I'll see y'all next time, okay? Bye everybody. Let me know what you think about Elden Ring lore, okay? See ya.